discovers that the drink could be poisoned. The air hostess reveals herself to be a terrorist as they engage in a pretty intense battle. Gigi is overwhelmed by this woman's strength and fighting skills because he's also a pretty good fighter himself. During the course of the fight, the woman throws weapons at Ryan. Luckily for Gigi's assistant Sophie comes to his aid. Sophie is able to blow up the plane, making all passengers on board fly out of the plane. She dives in deep to save Ryan and JJ from falling to their graves. While on air, she'd asks JJ if she could go to the homecoming dance with Ryan, but he refuses saying she has training schedules. Having absolute power over him, Sophie unbuckles his life jacket, letting him go for his last and only skydive on Earth. With only Ryan left, he tells Sophie that he can't go to the dance with her because he has asked Olivia Rodrigo. Sophie gives a devilish smile and then lets him fall just like his favorite bodyguard. Well, the scene shifted and we find out that it was all a dream. Sophie is a high school student who lives with her stepfather, J.J. Although J.J. is a CIA operative, he does all his fighting on desk duty and the only thing he protects is his dog and cute blue fish. Ryan having a hit single and asking Olivia Rodrigo to dance is an all-time high delusion because he's also a normal high school kid. Sophie and her stepdad's relationship isn't great as she doesn't regard him as his father. Just then, JJ's wife, Kate, who had gone to Rwanda for a global health mission, calls to check up on him and her daughter, Sophie. He tells her that things are going pretty well, except for the fact that Sophie doesn't regard him as her father because he reminded her of punctuality. Kate tells him to be patient with Sophie and he should find out what she actually loves to do and not make her train every day. Langley Virginia at the Central Intelligence Agency JJ supervises a mission while this tactical analyst Bobby hacks through the perimeter. They had sent an agent Christina to retrieve data concerning various nuclear weapons scattered around the world. Christina successfully infiltrates the place, but then an alarm alerts the guards. With limited time before they get to her, JJ orders Christina to abort the mission as she would be caught, but Bobby cheers her on to finish it up. Christina is successful and she evacuates the room before the guards could get to her. After a successful operation, Connolly, one of his co-workers, congratulates him. Meanwhile, at Australia, a serial killer is informed of Christina's success. He is told to go get the drive containing the weapon's location from her immediately. Back at the CIA, the chief of the CIA, Kim, calls and JJ explains to him how dangerous the nuclear weapons are and how they need him back on the field to neutralize those weapons and complete the mission. But J.J. refuses, saying he wants to be close to his family, and that is why he quit field duties. In Northern Virginia, Ryan leads his school choir as they practice for a national competition, while Sophie admires him from a distance. After the performance, their choir master tells them that the national choir rankings will come out that night, and the top five schools will present a command performance at the Vatican in Italy. After the rehearsals, Sophie congratulates Ryan for his performance, but then she ruins it with an awkward hug. She goes over to meet her best friend Collins. He asks her to help him rehearse a line for an Italian play, but she turns it down, saying she is going to be super busy with her dad. During their conversation, she asks Collins if he thinks Ryan is going to say yes to her as she asked him to dance at homecoming. Collins feels Ryan is a jock and he should be the one asking Sophie to a dance. He concludes by saying Ryan would be a fool if he doesn't accept her proposal. At Istanbul, Turkey, Christine is killed by the serial killer who sent to go steal the drive from her. Meanwhile, Sophie goes over to the gym for training, where her stepdad supervises her. When she fails to hit a particular move right, he tells her to keep practicing but she is fed up and quits training. Gigi tries to make her see that she needs to perfect every move if she wants to be badass, but she tells him that she doesn't really want to be an agent and it was all an infant dream. She busts up a knife skill which shows that she is quite decent. Just as Gigi tries to suggest something else that they could do, Sophie receives a notification that her school is going to Italy for the choir competition. The next day at the CIA office, Gigi informs Bobby that he would be chaperoning Sophie and her mates to Italy for a school trip. Bobby is worried about Gigi because he is getting softer by the day. She tells him that she decided to become his analyst so she could be his eyes and ears, but the past few years he became an analyst too. Just then, Connolly walks in, he tips in some advice for JJ, he tells him to open up the rules during the trip and make Sophie friends like him. On the day of the trip, Sophie lists out some ground rules that JJ had to keep to make him limit his time with her. The new school vice principal comes in to seal JJ, she introduces herself as Nancy Buck. She tells JJ that she would keep an eye on him during the trip, and if he isn't able to organize the kids well, she will dump him from a chaperone to a shadow tour guide. 
After an intense conversation with the vice principal, he goes over to introduce himself to Sophie's friends that are assigned to him on Kemperon's duty, but they are less attentive and begin to mock him. Jesus spices things up a little bit by tricking the kids that he brought in alcohol. Just then, we can see Collins and his dad, Kim. He disguises as a pediatric nurse as he doesn't want to let his son know that he's the chief of the CIA. G.J. goes over to meet him. Kim lets him know that the only reason he approved to let G.J. Capper on this trip is because he wants him to keep an eye on his son Collins. The student arrives Italy as G.J. gives them a tour guide of the place. When his speech became too embarrassing for Sophie, she goes to confront him. J.J. uses the opportunity to give her a gift. Sophie is excited at first but her excitement level drops when she noticed that the gift is a burner phone with built-in tasers. Gigi had some e-tags fixed in the phone to enable him track Sophia. Later that night at the hotel, Nancy, the vice principal, comes to check up on JJ. She informs him of the bedroll check that is to be reported to her by 10 p.m. as she has so many nervous parents to update. After she had gone, JJ quickly goes to check for the kids room by room, but he notices that they were nowhere to be found. When he got to the last room, he sees all the kids partying and having fun while drinking alcohol. While trying to organize the kids, the vice principal forces her way to the room, but JJ is fast enough to line up the kids as they rehearse songs for the competition, making her not suspect a thing. Sophie blames JJ for ruining her moment with Ryan as she was about to have her first kiss. She tells him to give her space or she will be his opposition on this trip. Meanwhile, Connolly reports to Kim that Christina never returned the drive and she's nowhere to be found. The student performs their song in Venice as they prepare to leave for Vatican. Sophie makes plans with Ryan and Collins, as they agree to sneak out to Florence at night. Meanwhile, it is revealed that the serial killer has been keeping watch on the children. In a bust, Sophie chats with Ryan as he sends goofy pictures to her. Collins isn't happy with this development as he really likes Sophie and not as a friend. At night, Sophie had put a camera in the vent of JJ's room to see his every move but then she discovers that J.J. had also put a tracker in her shoes. They go over to call Ryan, but unknowingly to them, J.J. and Trip wired him. J.J. acts like he doesn't know the kids were planning to sneak out and allows them make their escape outside the building. Just as they make it out, J.J. intercepts them. He asks his them to go back, but when he sees how Sophie's face was gloom, he allows them sneak out with the condition that they will return back 40 minutes before curfew time. The kids are happy and proceeds with their plan. When they got to the ice cream store, Sophie makes Collins leave as he is set to watch from a distance and help Sophie translate English to Italian to make her look cool in front of Ryan. Ryan is impressed and promises to hang out with her next time again. Just as they take pictures, some group of men kidnaps Collins in his hiding spot. Sophie leaves Ryan as she follows up the men. Meanwhile, we find out that Jade had actually followed the kids. Sophie chases after the men on bicycle. She is almost hit by a car but J.J. arrives just in time to save her. In the next scene, a photo of Collins is sent to Kim by the kidnappers. They send him a coordinates to their locations and tells him to come to Rome alone or Collins will die. After the call, Kim tells J.J. to head to Rome and he shouldn't inform anyone. Sophie shows J.J. a captured image of the man that kidnapped Collins. J.J. recognizes the serial killer to be Bishop Crane. He was a new guy in the elite squad during a drug operation in Colombia, but he sold out his team to the cartel to make millions. Gigi is the only survivor from that team. Kim goes to Rome to get the coordinates to the location. After he secretly meets up with JJ, he blames him for not protecting his son. Kim had come with Bobby, who is a tech analyst. A message from the terrorist tells Kim to go to Aviano Air Base to recover the data activation to see his son. Back at the school camp, the tension of Collins missing is reduced as they are told that he went back home for a family emergency. The team arrives at an M16 safe house where all the necessary tools they needed for the mission is being kept. Kim and JJ infiltrate the place. They are surprised to see no advanced security at first, but later on are surprised to be attacked by trained birds. They make it to the airbase. Kim informs JJ that he owes the colonel eight grand and he took his wife one time. When they meet up with the colonel, he didn't give Kim a nice welcome as he slaps him hard. But Kim assures him that he has come to pay up his money introduces Sophie as his stepdaughter and Bobby as his wife. Bobby uses the opportunity to get her first kiss. Bobby and Sophie goes to the data room, while Jay Janet put up an animated fight to buy the girl's time. They successfully rigged the data, but the CIA is informed of their plight, and they are tagged rogues. Kim and Jay Jeff finally get to the location, while Sophie and Bobby navigates the satellite few blocks away. They notice something wrong. 
but they are too late to realize it is a trap. Jijin and Kim are captured and the mastermind behind the operation it is revealed to be Nancy Buck, the school vice principal. She reveals that she had to create a new character to infiltrate the CIA. She had also used their own agents to steal the location of the nukes. She reveals that she planned the whole choir coming to Europe so she can kidnap Kim's son. Nancy asks for the code to activate the nukes or else she will kill Collins. With no other option, Kim proceeds to give her the code. She captures him and then injects Jage of a neurotoxin that will suffocate him and eventually kill him. Luckily enough, Sophie and Bobby tracks Jage in, they rescue him. Bobby injects him a tropine and adrenaline to mobilize him. When Jage finally regains consciousness, they all proceed to find Kim. During a near-death experience, Sophie drives the two to Chianti where they kept Collins captive. Collins, on the other hand, tries to escape but he is caught by Bishop, who tries to shoot him dead. Luckily enough, Jij arrives just in time to stop him, they engage in an intense battle, but Jij is no match as the neurotoxin still had its effects on him. Bobby comes to the rescue by firing amateur shots at them. Bishop manages to escape while Bobby kept on firing blind shots at him. He drops his phone, unfortunately. After tending to Jij's wound, Sophie goes over to comfort Collins. She tells him about his dad and how he's trying to keep him safe. Collins is surprised that his father is the chief of CIA operations. He thanks Sophie for coming to save him, and they both share a moment. At a church in Siena, Nancy brings Kim along as they go out looking for the nuke. She tells Kim that she is working for a group of powerful people who had their fortunes and assets seized by the corrupt government. Her husband is part of the oligarchs and she is ready to make the government pay for putting him in financial ruin. Just then, they find the nuke. Bobby searches through Bishop's phone to find a clue of what Nancy is up to. Meanwhile, Jage lets Sophie know that Collins really likes her, and she is torturing him by making him a friend. On the other hand, Bobby finds an email from Nancy that shows that she is going to detonate a WMD at Rome's financial district. Gigi calls in the authorities, but they discover it's a fake alarm. Just then he realized that he's being played, and the main event is happening at Vatican. Nancy arrives at the Vatican, she sends out a broadcast message to all the Central Intelligence Units, demanding for $50 billion or else she will detonate the bomb under the Vatican in Rome. Gigi and Sophie splits up as he goes over to intercept Nancy from detonating the bomb. Unfortunately, Bishop beats him up mercilessly. But when Bishop reveals that he infiltrated his home and killed his fish blueberry, Gigi becomes really angry and beats up Bishop. In the process of fighting, Nancy escapes, but Kim goes after her. Bishop manages to escape with the kill switch that activates the nuke. G. Jerry Lee goes after him to stop him. Meanwhile, Sophie discovers two phonies dressed as guards. She tasters them and brings them to a store. They inform her that they are working for Nancy, and all will allow anyone live. Just then they engage in an intense fight. Ryan and Collins comes to raid, but Ryan flees when he saw them fighting. Sophie is able to single-handedly beat the two guards with the help of her awesome skills. She goes after her dad as he tries to retrieve the kill switch. The Connolly and the CIA tries to arrest Kim, but he reveals that he isn't the bad guy, giving them proofs to trust him. The scene switches to Gigi and Bishop. During a crazy car chase in the streets of Rome, after numerous crashes, Gigi is able to put Bishop's car to a halt. He fights off Gigi and tries to kill him, but Sophie uses her knife skills to stop him. Gigi finishes him off, but the kill switch and the car ends up rolling into the river. With no other option, Jay jumps into the river to retrieve it. When his hands' hands couldn't get to the switch, Sophie comes to his aid. With the time ticking and bomb ready to detonate, they are left with the puzzle of the correct button they need to push to deactivate the bomb. A little transition happens and we see that JJ successfully deactivated the bomb. He is brought back to land as he's unconscious. After several attempts to bring him back to life, JJ finally wakes up to see Sophie by his side.